on It's Vegan, I am going to show you my recipe for white pizza with a pita crust. To start with, I have a half a cup of water here, and I am going to add some sugar. This is warm water. And I'm going to add some yeast. going to mix this up and set it aside. This is proofing your yeast. Now I'm going to mix up my egg replacer in a big bowl because we are going to sift our flour right into here. I'm just whisking together the water and the egg replacer. I'm going to get this all incorporated, no lumps. Now I'm just going to scrape down the sides and do one last check for lumps. This is just the egg replacer I chose to use. You could use whatever kind you want. There's just egg, there's flax seeds and water. There's many options. To that I'm going to add our oil. You're going to want to stir that real good and get it all incorporated well together. And you're going to want to find your sifter and we're going to put our flour right into there and then sift it right into our bowl. Throw our salt in there with flour. Here's the rest of our flour. Now we want to get these ingredients mixed together very well before we add the rest of our liquid and yeast in. Now it's time to slowly incorporate our water and yeast mixture. We're going to pour a little bit in and stir it and then pour a little bit in and stir it until we get it all mixed in there. Our dough is almost forming a ball here on its own, so it's going to be time to start kneading it. I'm going to get some flour, and we're going to work in the last bit of flour as we knead it. All right, I'm coating my hands with flour, and I'm going to get in there and see how sticky it is. It's always a little bit different. It seems like it is a little stickier this time, so I will have to work in more flour. And I'm just going to keep doing this until I get a nice ball formed and it's not too sticky on the outside. I didn't fast forward any of this because I wanted you to see how long it actually takes me and the only parts I cut out are when I'm just reaching from a bag of flour. I'm just gonna keep kneading it and working in flour until we have a nice ball. Work all the dough that's stuck on your fingers back into the ball. Some more flour on my hands. That's pretty close to where we want it. Just a tiny bit more flour. More here on the side. You're going to end up kneading the dough about 3 minutes. This is about the consistency that you want it to be. Okay, I'm forming it into a ball. We're going to put it in here and cover it with a tea towel. And let it sit for 30 to 45 minutes until it doubles in size. Up next we will start making our sauce. We are about to get ready to start making our white sauce, but I just wanted to show you that when you proof your yeast, if you can see how all these bubbles on the top here, this is how you can tell that your yeast is still good. Over to the stove to start making our sauce. To start our vegan Alfredo's white pizza sauce, we are going to melt some plant-based butter in a small saucepan. Then we are going to crush four cloves of garlic into that. Into that, we are going to add our salt and pepper, along with oregano. Then at this point, we are going to whisk in some flour. This is going to end up making a very clumpy paste. I'm going to get it all mixed in well. Now it's time to add some vegan plant milk of your choice. You're going to add about half now, stir it, and then we'll come back in and add the rest. You're going to want to pick something that is not flavored and doesn't have sugar added for this. The rest of our plant milk. 
Again, we want to whisk this until we don't have any lumps left in it. I am going to switch to a spatula. I want to be able to scrape the edges down and make sure nothing's sticking to the bottom of my pan. Add some nutritional yeast. Just get that all started as well. It smells good already. Now, optional at this point, I'm going to add some vegan Parmesan cheese. It is totally optional. We're going to let this cook down and thicken up till it's where we want it to be. It's one of those things that ends up happening fast. Don't get too distracted while you're doing this. It's starting to thicken up a little bit here. We still want it to get thicker for our pizza sauce. It has been about 10 or 15 minutes of this being on low, and this is about how thick I like it for when I do it on the pizza. You could always cook it down more or stop sooner. Personal preference. And turn it off and remove it from the heat. I'm going to keep stirring out a little bit. I don't want it to stick to the bottom. It's been 30 minutes and our pizza dough has doubled in size. I'm going to turn it out onto a cutting board. Also, our oven is preheating to 425. This is a nice soft dough here. Stretch it out a little bit. You are going to want to keep putting flour on this as you are rolling it out. And also, we're going to want to flour our rolling pin. And as I'm going around and rolling this out, I know that the edge of my rolling pin is off the dough. But you don't want to fully roll the rolling pin the whole way off the end of the dough. Because you'll end up with very thin edges. Check and see who my size is. Seems pretty good. I have cornmeal on my pizza stone too. Now we're just gonna flip our pizza crust onto our pizza stone. Get it positioned in the middle good. And then this is going to go into the oven and bake for about seven minutes. Now that our pizza crust is in the oven, I have chopped up some artichoke hearts that are grilled. I'm gonna put some of those on our pizza. I've got out some mushrooms, I'm going to cut up some onions, and you can put whatever kind of toppings you would like on this pizza. I've done it with jalapenos and olives, and that's very good. I like to do it with spinach. I have arugula today, so that's what we're going to do today. And I like to break them all up from each other. Oh, and slice them thin because they're not going to cook too long. You really want to squeeze the liquid out of your mushrooms for this. If you're using canned mushrooms. You don't want to put that extra liquid on the pizza. And I'm going to cut up some tomatoes. I like to thinly slice the tomatoes for this pizza. And I, I like to go around and do a little cut on the skin because when I take a bite of pizza, I don't like it when I get a tomato and it pulls the whole thing off. These are pretty much the last of my tomatoes from my garden this year. I'm going to go through and slice up a little bit more. You get the idea. Oh, there's our pizza crust. And rolling. Our pita pizza dough is right out of the oven. I actually want it to cool down a little bit and we'll usually lose this bubble before I put our sauce on it. Now it's just time to top our pizza to be a little delicate with this pita crust. Now, when we put our pizza back in the oven, you are going to want to make sure you put it on the top rack because we are going to switch it to broil. Now, you can put on whatever toppings you want. I'm going to start with my onions. I like to make sure that I don't have any of my onions stuck to each other. Now it's time for us to add the mushrooms to the pizza. And seriously, with this white pizza sauce on here, whether you put the Parmesan cheese in it or not, you are not necessarily going to need the vegan mozzarella I'm going to put on here, but it's a nice touch. Some artichoke hearts. These artichoke hearts happen to be grilled and have seasoning on them, but you can just use the plain ones and water. They work just fine, too. Some arugula on here this time, but like I said, I like to do this with spinach. I've done it with mixed greens, I've done it with kale. It's time for the tomatoes. Now with this white pizza, you're not going to want to put too many toppings on it. I found from experience that you'll kind of lose the flavoring of the white sauce if you do. And for this cheese, which is totally optional, we're just going to dot the top of our pizza. There are also like vegan mozzarella shreds that work very nicely for this. And like I think I said before, I have made this recipe without any so-called cheese on it. I'm going to rinse my hands off and throw this back in the oven on the top shelf. Our pizza is fresh out of the oven. I'm just gonna slice it up and let it cool a minute and then we will be back for a taste test. This is Charlie and I just wanted to say 
thanks to him for letting me use his kitchen and hopefully he'll try my pizza. Alrighty then. Well, let's try this piece right here. You don't admit, have to admit. Well, no, I want to admit. I did a good job. Yeah. Really I've been making good. like a pizza a day for like eight days now, I think. So. Crust is good and the toppings. You can sell that at Kroger. Thanks. Go good with a cold beer, which I'm getting right now. Go and get yourself <laughs> a beer and make yourself a pizza. See you next week. Take a cut and I'm going to go clean myself up <laughs> a little bit.